Unbelievable. And and so I wanted to just touch on this because this is the last question and you kind okay. of started off, you know, discussing it a little bit with like, there are those who will say that um, the pseudoscientists, they have some credibility because, you know, U.S. intelligence agencies have there there have been like declassified documents that show that they would bring on like psychics like Uri Geller to do um you know remote viewing so that to them never, never Uri Geller sorry or someone like someone like him someone like him I'm yes just so like they they'll bring these people on and then people will say oh that's confirmation that this stuff is that the government was using these you know I to me it just makes sense that like the government was willing to try anything and they they were behind the curve back then so they would be willing to use and once it became you know proven to them that it was it was tomfoolery then they classified it because it's like it's it's embarrassing in a way looks bad well the way I understand it is uh back during that time yeah we did like 20 years of psychic research and a lot of uh professors and scientists made a lot, a lot of money off that during those years. They liked it. If you ever saw the movie Men Who Stare at Goats, you'll know about what, what went on there. And my friend Ray Hyman had something to do with the real, the real project. But the deal was they, they had heard through intelligence that the Russians had some way of remote viewing with submarines that were up in the uh, Antarctic, something like that. So immediately they said, well, what are we going to do? Well, we better set up something and start testing people who can do remote viewing. Got into this whole thing, but it was propaganda in order to, yeah, the word would get back to the Russians that, hey, we're doing it too. It was like an arms race, only it right. was a psychic race. Right, right. But neither side was having any success with it. It was just that we couldn't be seen as not doing something. And later it turned out that the Russians, they did a little research, but once they realized it wasn't gonna make any difference, they just left, let sleeping dogs lie. And then our intelligence said, you know, they're gonna get ahead of us. They're gonna be able to see our submarines. And it was just, it was all bullshit. And, and it was, it's like the space race, you know, they, they, they kept- they It is, it was, it was a psychic race and it ended up costing all of us a lot of money. And all we got out of it is a bunch of people who are still writing books about it as if it was real. And again, if I could see something that was going on in Ukraine right now that I could do something about, don't you think they'd be talking to me about it? Mm -hmm. In other words, you, ha you have to use common sense. Common sense has become uncommon sense. It's like, oh, you're psychic. You can tell me what's going on in a bunker in Ukraine. I can make pretty educated guesses, but as, as for drawing a picture of it or anything like that, what this comes from is <clears throat> an old psychic effect that mediums would do, which is called design duplication. You can look this up in the parapsychology books, okay. which is where you have somebody draw a picture of something and I'm across the room and I duplicate that drawing. Mm -hmm. It's a trick. Right. <laughs> I hate to tell you, it is a trick. Again, if you could do that, what else can you do? So we have to use common sense and say, you know, let's think this through, which they didn't do uh, during that time because the Cold War was making it very difficult to believe anything. So again, that's my opinion. Uh, remote viewing is a bunch of bunk. Right. It could also be misinformation that is being pushed out there to, you know, have the Russians or have the Americans waste their time on something. That's that, right. Yeah. And millions and millions of dollars. And also, you can you can uh, set up a, a uh, what's the word I'm looking for? False flag things. All sorts yeah, of yeah, things. Yeah. You can you can make seem like they happen for certain reasons. And if that's why I say this book about the CIA written by John Mulholland uh, has amazing things in it where they hired him to do the kind of things we used to see on Man From Uncle television shows, you know, where a, a spy would be walking down the street and he'd turn a corner and they'd be grabbed and another guy would take his place and go on. So if he was being followed, you know, all that kind of stuff is stage magic. And and now they call it, what is it called in, in the Secret Service? It's called, um, I can't think of the name, but it's it's conjuring. 
it's it's magic and illusion. Wow. Wow. This is amazing. Spycraft. That's what it's called. Spycraft. Very uh, unbelievable. This was a really unbelievable thing. This is a dream come true for me. Just that I've always wanted to talk to a mentalist. And uh, Good. before we go, um, yeah, you can tell our audience, you know, some books you recommend if people are interested. Like you mentioned some books of your friend Mulholland and the other, I forgot who the other guy mm -hmm. was. Um, and also, to, like, obviously to get them started and understanding what's going on, but also to plug what you're doing now, where we can find you, um, okay. any shows, if you have any books coming out. Okay, well, <coughs> excuse me. <clears throat> My main book right now is called Psychic Blues, and you can get it on Amazon. And I also advise people to get the audio book because when I wrote Psychic Blues, I turned it into my publisher at Feral House and he liked it. He wanted to do the book, but he really, they edited about a third of the book out because they wanted just the tricks. They wanted just the darkest side of my personality when I worked as a <laughs> professional psychic. But they didn't really want to know about my life or what my influences were or what some of the funniest sides were. So I said, look, I just want to get this book out. Go ahead and do it. So they did it. But afterwards, I said, you know, I'm going to do an audio book where I'm going to narrate it. I'm going to add back in all the things that I really liked that were taken out of the book. And so I made an audio book and I added sound effects and music cues. And I made it really interesting. So now it's much funnier. Plus, at the point where I finally narrated the book I was so sick of the book you know so sick of because I had to do it twice I did it one time the audio wasn't good enough I did it again so I have this kind of bitter attitude which I think really adds to the overall complexity of the character of the psychic in it. and it's all true psychic blues is all true I didn't make anything up I just changed the names of the not so innocent so I wouldn't get sued so I highly recommend the audiobook. You can get it on Audible for, I don't know, six bucks or something. If you like audiobooks. If you don't like audiobooks, please get the uh, paperback. Uh, my we're website. Gonna, we're going to plug this. We're going to plug this. Uh, your book on, on our, our page. on our page yeah. on Instagram. So please do, please yeah. do. I appreciate that. Um, my website is www.themarkedward dot com no s on the edward edward like john edward no relation at all i want everybody <laughs> to know that so there you can find like 14 other books i've written they're not all like hardbound or the kind of thing you would see in a bookstore they're books for magicians so they break down into graphology handwriting analysis tarot uh you know, different subjects that I've studied over the years. And uh, you can get those books and you can learn a lot about, about readings if that's what you want to do. Wow. So again, I'm advertising to the criminal aspect as well as the entertainment <laughs> aspect. But what am I going to do? You have to make your own decision what you want to do with this. Are you an entertainer or are you a fraud? That's up to you. Wow. Uh, now, as for, as for what we've been up to, right now we are... We've done like a whole bunch of things, and you can see all of those if you go to abouttime.com. Or is it org? That's Susan Gerbic, and you can look up Susan Gerbic, G-E-R-B-I-C. They have all of our stings on, on video, including the one with the five to 12-year-olds, if you want to see the bottom oh of the barrel. Wasn't there like a New York Times article about it? Yes, there's a New York Times article where you, you can see that on my website. That is that is there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the New York Times. That's a good one. That's a good place to start. Uh, we are in the process of working on another sting. However, we have decided that we are, we're not going to do anything until we get some big media backing us because otherwise we're preaching to the choir and we're tired of doing that. Yeah. You know, we're not, we're not going to do a TV show where we show both sides. That's out. We don't care about the other side anymore. We want somebody to follow us doing this thing, how we did it, and what we showed on a major media so if you're out there and you're looking for something, we're the ones that can do it. But you have to be willing to take the stand, not to try and say, 
well, maybe it was psychic. Forget that. So if you go to Mark Edward uh, on YouTube or Susan Gerbic on YouTube, you will see a lot of our stings and the psychic things that we've done. And I think they'll make you laugh, which is the best way to get the message through. For sure. Wow. Amazing. It's really important work that you're doing. Yeah. Yeah, you, even though you're agnostic, you're agnostic, yeah. but you're doing God's work. So <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. You know, I, I, years ago, when I first started doing this, my ex-wife said, you're a hero. And I've always remembered that, you know, I mean, it's like, that's fine. That's that's what I want people to think. You know, I'm not trying to I'm trying to make a living at it. I, I realized when I worked as a psychic, if I had wanted to, I could have gone on making lots of money, but I had a conscience. And that's the problem is most of these people have zero conscience and all they want to do is uh, make money. So wow. I don't need to make money. I'm perfectly happy. One of the most oft-repeated phrases in the Bible is protecting the weak, protecting yeah. the people. That's, that's like the running theme. Orphans, yeah. widows. Orphans, widows. And, you know, honestly, this is so important what you're doing, and we really appreciate having you on. Well, I really appreciate that. That makes me feel, that makes my heart pitter-patter a little. Bit. True. So True. I'm glad you guys got it, and I'm glad that you're going to get it out there to the rest of the world. And... And you know where to find me. So if you want to do it again, just let me know. Oh, fantastic. Amazing. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you. Really okay. Fun. All right. Have a good one. Bye, everybody. Thank yeah. you, sir. Thank you.